Let's face it, we're all busy. So busy that sometimes microwaving yesterday's pizza feels like a culinary achievement worth of a Food Network special. But before you celebrate that achievement with a side of guilt and regret, let's talk about how to eat healthy when your schedule looks like a game of Tetris gone wrong. So first off, there are plenty of people who think that they can out-exercise a bad diet. But here's a bit of a sobering thought that might make you put down that gym membership application. Exercise only accounts for about 5% of your daily calorie burn. Yes, you heard that right. All the huffing and puffing on a treadmill represents just a tiny slice of your daily expenditure pie. The truth about where your calories actually go might surprise you. The largest portion, about 70%, goes to your basic bodily functions, what scientists call your basal metabolic rate. Think of it as the energy cost of keeping your internal lights on. Your body needs this energy just to maintain basic life processes like breathing, circulating blood, and keeping your organs functioning. It's basically like paying the utilities for your body's apartment. Not exciting, but absolutely necessary. The next chunk, about 15%, goes towards something called non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or NEAT. This is the random movement you do throughout the day, like fidgeting during meetings, pacing while on a phone call, or doing that thing where you pretend to be busy when your boss walks by. These seemingly insignificant movements actually can add up quite a bit to your daily expenditure throughout the day, and this can range anywhere from even just a few hundred calories to many, many thousands of calories per day. Another 10% goes to the thermic effect of food, essentially the energy your body uses to digest and process what you eat. Yes, your body charges you a processing fee for every meal. Some foods, particularly particularly proteins and fiber-rich foods, cost a little bit more energy to digest, which is one of the reasons they can help be helpful for weight management. And finally, we arrive at exercise, weighing in at a modest 5% of your daily calorie burn. This means if you're too busy to hit to the gym, you're not actually missing out on as much as you think. But the real game changer here is your nutrition. So think of your kitchen as a battlefield. Your willpower is the soldier, those chips in the pantry are the enemy. So instead of fighting a losing battle every single night, why not change the battlefield entirely? This concept of environmental design I think is very powerful because it acknowledges a fundamental truth about human nature. We usually take the path of the least resistance. So the first step in this makeover is what I like to call the great purge. Start by identifying your trigger foods, those items that you just can't seem to eat in moderation. Maybe it's the midnight cookie stash in your pantry or that emergency chocolate bar that somehow needs replacing every other day. These foods aren't bad foods per se, but they're probably not helping you achieve your health goals. Once you've identified these items, time for a bit of a creative redistribution. Find a neighbor you don't particularly like, you know, kidding, sort of, and give them your junk food. You've just turned your act of self-improvement into an act of community service. The logic here is very simple but powerful. If it's not in the house, you can't eat it, unless you're willing to drive to the grocery store at 10 p.m. in your pajamas, which let's be honest, is a level of dedication best channeled elsewhere. So by removing these temptations from your immediate environment, you're not just relying on willpower, you're actually using strategy. But sometimes it's not realistic to get the trigger food out of the house altogether. I know having a family can definitely complicate things, and I'll give myself here as an example. My weakness? Oreos, Oreo anything. The cookies, the ice cream, you know, homemade Oreo cake. If there's anything Oreo around, I promise you it will be eaten by me. My wife, Abby, also loves having Oreos as an occasional sweet treat, but she's able to exert a little bit more, will more willpower than I am. So solution here is to hide the cookies. Have a forbidden area and have your family hold you accountable. Alternatively, you can put the cookies on a very high shelf or other hard to reach area. So you're essentially risking your life climbing the counter every single time you wanna access them. These are just what work for us and our family. So when it comes to preparing healthy meals with a busy schedule, there are three main approaches, each with its own balance of time investment and convenience. Think of these as like different levels in a video game. You can start at level one, work your way up, or jump straight to expert mode if you're feeling a little ambitious. The first approach is what we call the planner. This method requires minimal upfront effort, but can still yield pretty decent results. The key is taking about 15 minutes during your weekend to plan out your meals for the week. This isn't about creating an elaborate meal plan or anything like that. It's just about having a basic roadmap so you're not standing in front of your fridge at 7 p.m. wondering what to eat. A plan could help you remember to thaw the ground beef that you wanna eat the night before instead of sitting around with nothing quality ready to be made. The second approach is the prep master. This is for those willing to invest a larger chunk of time up front just to save time during the week. Typically, this involves dedicating a few hours on Sunday or really whatever day works for you just to prepare multiple meals in advance. You may become that person who brings perfectly portioned containers to work or school. And yes, you might feel a little smug when your colleagues are waiting in line for takeout. Just own it. Do your thing. The third approach, which I call the strategic cook, is something of a like a Goldilocks solution. Instead of dedicated meal prep time, you simply cook regular meals, but make extra portions. This is what I personally do. This approach requires less upfront time commitment than full meal prep, but still provides the convenience of having ready-made meals on hand. It's also a lot more flexible. If plans change, you're not just stuck with five days of the same lunch, smelly chicken or something like that. I prefer to do this and generally prepare single ingredients. I cook a big batch of chicken, roasted mixed vegetables, and some rice, for example. 
These can be eaten on its own. You can add it to a pan with some teriyaki sauce for a stir fry. You can add some guacamole, salsa, and cheese, roll it up in a tortilla, and now you have a burrito. So much flexibility. And one other thing I wanna highlight is that less really can be more. The curse of modern cooking advice is the assumption that more ingredients often equal better food. But when you're juggling a busy schedule, those 27 ingredient recipes from fancy food blogs ju aren't just impractical, they're actually a recipe for takeout surrender. The key is to embrace strategic shortcuts that don't compromise nutritional value. Let's start with frozen vegetables, the unsung heroes of busy kitchens everywhere. There's often an unwarranted stigma attached to frozen produce, as if using pre-cut butternut squash somehow makes you less of a cook. But here's the truth, frozen vegetables Vegetables are usually flash frozen at peak ripeness, often making them more nutritious than the fresh ones that have been sitting in your crisper drawer for about a week. Plus, they're already washed and cut, which means you're more likely to actually use them. They'll also last longer, which of course is the point of freezing them. Less food waste and more vegetable consumption sounds like a win-win to me. Canned legumes are also another game changer. While your grandmother might insist in soaking you know, dried beans overnight, the reality is that most of us don't have the forethought or the desire to plan our meals that far in advance. I think a well-stocked pantry with some various canned beans, lentils, canned tuna, canned chicken, they're not gross, I promise, means you're always minutes away from adding protein and fiber to any meal. Quick cook grains also deserve some special mention. The invention of microwavable rice packets may not be as impressive as landing on the moon, but for busy professionals, I think it's arguably more useful. Having these on hand means the difference between a balanced meal and another night of whatever you can find in the back of your cupboard. But sometimes even the best laid meal plans sometimes go awry, which is why maintaining an emergency arsenal of healthy foods is crucial. This isn't just about having fancy ingredients, it's about having reliable options that require very little preparation when the time is tight. Raw vegetables might not sound exciting, but having pre-cut carrots, cherry tomatoes, and maybe like sugar snap peas or raw bro broccoli readily available can be the difference between a healthy snack and a vending machine expedition. Pair these with single service hummus containers because hummus makes everything fancy and suddenly have a snack that feels intentional rather than desperate. Similarly, nuts and seeds are nature's fast food. They're shelf stable, pretty nutrient dense and require zero preparation. The key is to portion them in advance though, otherwise it's dangerously easy to eat half a pound of almonds while answering emails or watching TV. A handful of nuts paired with a piece of fruit, maybe a protein shake can make a satisfying mini meal when you're busy running between meetings or classes. But I like lifting weights, so I need some protein around. Of course, protein powder should be a staple in your pantry just to boost your protein intake. Don't forget those single serve Greek yogurt packets. Combine the protein powder with the Greek yogurt, maybe top with some protein cereal, and now you have a sweet treat in three minutes that's like over 50 grams of protein. Now let's transition and talk a little bit more about the technology that you can use. So modern kitchen appliances are like having a team of sous chefs at your disposal if you know how to use them effectively. The air fryer, for instance, has revolutionized healthy cooking for busy people. It can turn out crispy vegetables in minutes with minimal oil, unlike traditional ovens, and you don't need to wait for it to preheat for too long. The air fryer is essentially a countertop convection oven that can make everything from roasted Brussels sprouts to crispy chickpeas to roasted chicken with almost zero effort. But you can't forget the microwave. I think it deserves a serious reputation rehabilitation. It's not just for reheating coffee or nuking frozen burritos. I think it's a legitimate cooking tool that can steam vegetables, cook greens, and even surprisingly make decent eggs. The key is understanding its strengths, excels at cooking foods with high water content, and can be a lifesaver for quick cooking vegetables when you're short on time. A high powered blender is another essential ally. We got a good one on our wedding registry last year. Use this for smoothies, you know? And this is beyond smoothies. Although those are pretty valuable quick meals in themselves, it can also create instant soups, sauces, and dips that make simple ingredients feel a lot more exciting. You can throw in leftover cooked vegetables with some broth and some spices, blend it until smooth, and you have a sophisticated soup that would make a restaurant chef proud. But let's be realistic, there are gonna be times when cooking simile is not gonna happen. Maybe you're working late, maybe you're exhausted, or maybe mercury is in retrograde and your kitchen is, seems impossibly far away. The key is not to view takeout as a failure, but to approach it strategically. First, you have to abandon the idea that takeout meals need to be indulgent. Yes, every food delivery app will show you pizza and burgers first, but most restaurants also offer pretty healthy options altogether. Consider it an opportunity to try healthy foods that you wouldn't typically cook at home. That elaborate green bowl or carefully constructed salad might actually be more exciting than your standard takeout fare. I think the key is to have a pre-selected list of restaurants that offer 
healthy options. When you're hungry and tired is not the time to start researching nutritious takeout choices. Build this list when you're not hungry, keep it somewhere easily accessible, you know, maybe the notes app on your phone. I think your future hungry self will thank you. Some of my favorite restaurants for quality meals and ingredients are really any type of bowl place, you know, Chipotle, Cava, and Sweetgreen will give you a pretty balanced meal with less of the stuff that'll make you feel gross and bloated. I'm also a fan for supporting local businesses, so keep an eye out for Greek food, Middle Eastern, Thai, and Spanish restaurants. Their foods are generally leaner meats, light on the calorie dense sauces, and heavy on the veggies. Don't sleep on Panda Express either. They have some pretty macro friendly options as well. But of course, this depends on what you choose, so make sure you make some good choices whenever you're at these places. So overall, the truth about healthy eating with a busy schedule isn't about finding more time, it's about using the time you have a little bit more strategically. Yes, you're busy, but you probably still found time to watch that new Netflix series or scroll through social media for an hour. No judgment, we all do this. But acknowledging these time expenditures can help us make more conscious choices about our priorities. Success in healthy eating isn't about perfection, it's about progress and consistency and trying to be better than your previous self. Sometimes that means eating microwave frozen vegetables while watching cooking shows on YouTube. You know, that counts too. The goal is to make healthy eating work within your life, not to reorganize your entire life around healthy eating. So try out some of these tips and remember that even the busiest person has to eat something. Might as well make it something that doesn't make you feel like you're taking a nap immediately afterward. All right, folks, that is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you found any tips useful. Feel free to comment any other future video ideas and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.